Stealth, the art of quietly getting in, getting it done, and getting out. Some of the best missions in video games are stealth ones, and we want to talk about them today. Hi folks, it's Falcon. Here's the 10 best stealth missions of all time, part 3. Now obviously, there is a part 1 and a part 2. You might want to go check them out if you're interested in this topic. It's pretty awesome ones. Lady Boyle's Last Party from Dishonored comes to mind. In fact, there's a couple of them from Dishonored. Uh, Skullface from MGS5. Several Hitman missions, of course. Uh, both videos, quite good. After this video, go back to them. Without any further ado, starting off at number 10, it's Sniper Elite 5's Spy Academy mission. While they're not the most complex and in-depth stealth games out there, the Sniper Elite games do have one big thing working in their favor. They have gigantic, complex levels that are perfect for stealth infiltration. There's a ton of great, super memorable missions in these games, but there's one that stands out in my mind, and it's Spy Academy. It's the marquee mission in Sniper Elite 5, a gigantic castle built on an island where pretty much everything you can see, you can go to. It's like if the mountains in Skyrim had a French castle on them. It's an utterly massive place with so many optional routes, little nooks and crannies to explore. You can easily spend multiple hours just trying to fully clear out this single mission, and I'm not exaggerating. Bus? This place is huge. In fact, it's so big that it can start to get repetitive after a while. There's just so many enemies and rooms and hallways and stairs. The game does not have the careful restraint and excellent level of design of something like a Hitman game, but it does have size and spectacle, and sometimes that's really all you need. It's just one of those examples of how a beautiful and gigantic place to explore is sometimes just all you need for a standout stealth level, and the Spy Academy has that in spades. Number nine is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's Cliffhanger. When you're talking about Call of Duty, there's two legendary stealth missions in the series, All Gillied Up, which I mentioned in part one, and this one, Cliffhanger. It may be the platonic ideal of a Call of Duty stealth mission. It's perfectly paced with a lot of variety uh, in what you're doing. It doesn't like overstay its welcome. It's set in a unique, eye-catching location. It's just all super memorable. From the beginning of the mission where you're crawling along a cliff to sneaking through the base in whiteout conditions with only a heartbeat sensor telling you where enemies are, it's just a, a great mission. It's one of those missions in a video game that just has like a special feeling to it. There's just something about it that goes way above and beyond anything else in the series in a highly specific way. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. It just does one specific thing really, really well, and you can't get it anywhere else. The whole thing ends with a bang, too, ending with a standoff against the Russian army and this out-of-control snowmobile chase right out of a James Bond movie. It's over-the-top crazy that devolves into action nonsense by the end, but those stealth parts, they are burned into my brain all these years later. It's just a fantastic and memorable mission, one of the series' best. <laughs> And number eight is Dishonored to the Dust District, as though we weren't going to mention the Dishonored series on here. As long as these lists are called best stealth missions of all time, and there are more Dishonored missions to mention, uh, then we'll keep mentioning them, because it's impossible to choose just one out of this series. It would be easy to make these lists half Dishonored missions, because seriously, there's just so many good ones. Uh, from the bank job and Death of the Outsider, to Eminent Domain from Knife of Dunwall, to pretty much any mission in Dishonored 2. But for today, let's just focus on the Dust District. In any other game, this would be a throwaway transition mission, because... I mean, fundamentally, that's what it is. Your main goal here is to gain access to the Stilton Estate, which is protected by a special puzzle lock. To get into this place, you need to side with one of two warring factions, the Howler's Gang or the Religious Zealot Overseers, and depending on who you side with, it completely changes the makeup of the mission. I've been trying to bring Burn down for months. You did what others couldn't. And now you own me, Paul. 
Or you can just ignore all that and solve the puzzle lock yourself because of course that's an option too. That's what makes this mission so fantastic. It's so open-ended and gives you multiple ways to complete it however you want. It's just also a really striking and unique location, both run down and ornate at the same time. Another thing that makes this mission stand out are the dust storms that blow through the district every once in a while, uh, which obscures you and your enemy's vision, which is a great but risky opportunity for stealth. There's just so much depth and complexity to this place. There's a lot to do, uh, but it's not overwhelmingly large either. It's easy for this mission to get overshadowed by the next one in the game, the famous time-traveling crack-in-the-slab mission. But as a pure stealth experience, I think Dust District is just a little bit better. Hear someone over there. I just need to make sure. Sure. By the stricture! By the stricture! Isn't she the woman on the top? You are so How dare you! Oh, shame on you! Moving on to number seven, it's Watch Dogs 2's Hack the World. Out of all the Watch Dogs games, the second entry of the series has the most complex and open-ended stealth missions, and it's not even close. A uh, personal standout mission is the one near the end of the game, where you infiltrate this gigantic rocket hangar and modify a satellite. It's your classic open-ended setup, where the game lets you just kind of figure out what you're doing on your own. Uh, there's cameras and heavy security everywhere, but like pretty much every mission in this game, it's possible to stealth through everything without a anyone. That's really the ideal way to play this game, to sneak into a place, do your thing, and get out with anyone getting wise. It's really the only way a lot of the stuff you do would make sense, because seriously, if some random guy shot up Google headquarters, I think that'd probably be on the national news. <laughs> and that, kids, is how you bug a satellite. I've got a sack full of cookies waiting here for you. It'll be a while before the rocket's ready to launch. We'll call you when it's time. Until then, go buy yourself something pretty. But, or don't. I mean, I don't really care what you do. It'd get a little bit more attention than I think you could tolerate having in your position as an anonymous hacker. But what's so great about this mission is just how epic it is in scale. The hangar is enormous, and the mission you're doing is the most audacious yet. At the end of the mission, you literally take control of the satellite and hack it into this massive data center in one of the most impressive set piece moments of the entire series. I mean, Watch Dogs 2 has multiple great sneaking missions, but I think this one's just something else. <laughs> You know, it's a little stressful doing this with all of you watching. Marcus. Marcus. Seriously? You're gonna do this now? Marcus! 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 And number six is Assassin's Creed Rogues by Invitation Only. This might be a bit of an outsider choice, but the first assassination in Rogue is just great. It's got your classic assassination setup with a dinner party, uh, an interesting historical adjacent target, uh, which is Lawrence Washington, the brother of George. There's plenty of ways to approach the target. There's ample opportunities for social stealth, which this series could always use more of, and it's not a total pushover. <laughs> The mission requires some careful maneuvering because your target is always on the move and has bodyguards. If you know the right place to hide, taking them out isn't that difficult, but it can take a while to get to that point. It's not like a super complex mission or even all that flashy, but it's a solid opening assassination that takes advantage of all the things that make this series unique. <sighs> you are too late, assassin. It's never too late to ruin Templar plans. Master Washington. <coughs> but my plans are already in motion. Even leading you here <coughs> has given my allies time to escape. 
At number five is Splinter Cell Chaos Theory's Displace. Uh, it's taken three parts, but I finally have an excuse to talk about Displace. This is easily one of the best missions in the entire series. Fantastic top to bottom. I in this mission, Sam has to sneak into the headquarters of Displace International, a private military contractor that's probably definitely up to no good. What's great about this mission is how it really makes you feel like a spy. You gotta break into this place quietly. If you kill even one guy, the jig is up. From there, you have to access the servers and get out, which is obviously much easier said than done. The place is a super modern office building with glass everywhere, making it extremely difficult to avoid line of sight. But there's a catch. All this glass uses technology that makes it so you can switch between transparent and solid with the flick of a switch, which is a pretty cool effect that adds another layer of challenge while trying to sneak through the place. It's a large, complex layer with a lot of optional objectives, and while it's difficult to fully explore and the no-kill requirement for the first section of the level makes it kind of a pain, it's such a well-designed and interesting location, it just stands out as one of the best. And number four is Siren Harumi Yamoda, Day 2, 1500 hours. So far, this list has featured Supernatural Assassins, Tier 1 Operations, and Super Snipers. So how do you follow that up? Obviously with a 10-year-old girl. The first Siren game is really a stealth game at heart. All the characters you play as are relatively normal people up against these zombie-like monsters that are literally unkillable. Uh, the only advantage you have is sight jacking, a special power that lets you see through the eyes of an enemy. It's a terrifying game normally, but this mission is a particular standout because you're even more vulnerable than usual. You're a little girl trapped in a house full of crazy people people and you have to find a way out. The only way to effectively avoid these guys is to use sight jacking, which gives you an uncanny glimpse into the day-to-day -day lives of, you know, these guys. So they wander around the house and they go through the emotions of their former existence and a cruel parody of life. It's an incredibly tense mission that's short, but so easy to screw up because it's extremely awkward and the crowded interior and the sometimes unpredictable movements of your stalkers. It is a pain in the ass, but it's a standout mission in the original Siren for a reason. And number three is Desperados 3, The Devil's Canyon. The final mission of this squad-based tactical stealth game is a true test of skill and an absolute gauntlet that forces you to use every possible advantage if you want to survive it. Thankfully, it's one of the rare missions to give you access to all five characters at once, but you're going to need them, so it makes sense. Not the old and the new. Let's get going. This uh, mission divides your team into two groups on either side of the canyon, which is crawling with enemies. There's rarely, if ever, any easy opportunities to take guys out, so to do basically everything, you gotta make slow, consistent progress. Careful planning and execution is key. It's not a, a, a flashy level. In fact, it's an intentional throwback to previous Desperados games. It's a no gimmicks, pure challenge sort of stealth level. The kind of interlocking puzzle box that Desperados 3 developer Mimi Me Games uh, were the masters of. Hey now. Those tracks are yours. What the fuck? <laughs>
At number two is Thief 2, The Metal Age, the first city bank and trust. You can't do a list talking about the best stealth missions without bringing on one of the granddaddies of the genre. When talking about the best missions of Thief 2, it's usually a toss up between the epic Life of the Party and First City Bank and Trust, and I already did Life of the Party in part one, so what the hell, let's talk about the bank mission this time. This is the bank mission where it all began. I'm pretty sure in every stealth game, you're required to have a bank mission. It's in the fine print somewhere. Want to make a mission-based sneaking game? You got to put in a bank. It's just the rules. I don't make them. It's one of the first, and it's still, of course, one of the best. Rather than being massive like Life of the Party, this mission is compact and dense, with multiple routes of entry and many different ways to explore the bank. It's also got some of the heaviest security in the series. The place is loaded with different security robots and cameras, and there's a complex locking system if you even want to get close to accessing the vault. Oh yeah, a and the security? Guess what? It's randomized, so good luck with that. <coughs> 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 And finally, at number one, Hitman 2, The Finish Line. The first mission in Hitman 2 is, excuse the pun, a real victory lap for IO Interactive. The mission is huge, varied, and interesting with tons of amusing options for mayhem. Your mission, kill two targets during this international test race. The place is swarming with people. It's filled with optional areas, little side rooms to check out, and there's so many different mission stories, so to speak, to follow. Get down. Next up, oh. It's the perfect sort of event mission. There's a ton of stuff going on at one time, but it's not overly complicated or confusing. The area is dense and surprisingly wide open, but it's varied with no area that's quite like any other. You'd never confuse the pit area for the podium building or the park from the huge expo center. It's, it's very distinct. The place is so big that half the fun of this mission is just looking around, seeing the stuff you can find. Stealth barely factors into the equation in moments like these, but as big as this place is, it's also excellently designed for stealth of course, and it offers many different options for infiltration. And even ignoring that, it's a great idea for a Hitman level, you know? Events make for some of the best levels in these games, and this is one of the biggest and easily one of the best. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks